The following image was taken on July the 12th, 1863, and it depicts the Baltimore Pike with a large 90-foot tulip poplar tree. This tree was known in Gettysburg for standing alone on this hill near the Evergreen Cemetery gatehouse just across the street. Also in the photograph is a woman with a dress and then in the distance a medical tent. And today's video is going to be on the tulip poplar tree that once stood here at Gettysburg. A little bit about the tree, the photograph, and of course the tent and the woman in the photograph. Again, the photograph was taken by Frederick Gutenkost on July the 12th, 1863. Today, as we stand in the same position, the area looks like this. Now the tulip poplar tree is, can be seen in very many photographs uh, that were taken in 1863 all the way up to its demise in 1876. Uh, some of the more famous photographs that the tulip poplar tree was taken, uh, or shows rather, would be the, the photograph of the three Confederate prisoners. And if you look to the uh, left rear horizon of the three Confederate prisoners, you'll see the tree that once stood in this area um, looming high in the background. You can also see the Evergreen Cemetery Gatehouse. Uh, a few of the other photographs are taken from the seminary area toward East Cemetery Hill, as well as some photographs that were taken near the National Cemetery site looking at the rear of the Evergreen Cemetery Gatehouse in November of 1863, and you can again see the tulip poplar tree without its leaves on it. Uh, in this video, we're actually going to walk across the street, and I'm going to show you where the tulip poplar tree uh, once stood and talk about its demise. So we're going to cross the Baltimore Pike here. Today, there are two other trees, uh, not quite 95 feet tall, but they sit in the general vicinity of where the tulip poplar tree once stood. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to get to the site of the tulip poplar tree. Uh, we just started filming right there at the Evergreen Cemetery Gatehouse. Uh, we walked across the street here and when you walk across the street you want to pass by um, the battery here along the Emmitsburg Road to the stone wall. And as you can see in front of us the stone wall uh, that begins at what we call Tablet Row which is in the distance behind it you want to walk about 15 feet on the stone wall until you come to these two uh, ball-like boulders that kind of sit here at a height by itself. And this is actually the site of the original tulip poplar tree, which again shot up into the distance of 95 feet and could be seen from all over Gettysburg. Now, a little bit about this tulip poplar tree. Um, it, was, it was very well known and seen through the town. Again, photographs that were taken in 1863 all the way up to 1876 uh, showed it. Now, a little bit <clears throat> about the tulip poplar tree's dem demise. Um, on the night of August the 17th, 1876, a severe thunderstorm that was about two hours long uh, hit Gettysburg. Um, the lightning that happened during that thunderstorm that night um, hit a lot of trees around the town and one of the trees it hit was the large tulip poplar tree on Cemetery Hill. Uh, that tree um, was very conspicuous. In fact, the Star and Centennial newspaper uh, for August 24th, 1876, was one week later, and I quote, The lightning struck a number of trees around town, among others the large poplar which crowns Cemetery Hill, and for which years has been the most conspicuous object around Gettysburg, being visible for miles from all directions. The tree is about 90 feet high and 
10 or 12 feet in circumference near the base of the trunk. The lightning struck a large limb about 30 feet from the top and passing down shattered and splintered the tree so badly that it will probably die. A large piece was thrown uh, across the pike a distance of 70 or 80 feet with sufficient force to break the heavy iron railing around the National Cemetery. So that article from August the 24th, 1876, claims that the tree that stood right there in the center where our two boulders are at actually uh, threw a limb across the street here to the National Cemetery and broke a piece of the iron fence away. Um, now this uh, is going to be continued on in our next video of the Guten Coast photo of the tulip poplar tree. This has been the tulip poplar tree at Gettysburg, part one on Gettysburg this Battlefield This is going to be the Facebook. tulip poplar tree, part two here on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. And again, as we look at the Guten Coast photo, this photo uh, has always been labeled as be taken between the days of July 10th and July 12th of 1863. I do believe that I have information that this photograph was taken on July 12th, 1863. But first we're going to talk about the woman that's in the photo. Um, that woman is the Vivandier of the 114th Pennsylvania, uh, Mary Tepe. Now Mary Tepe was a Vivandier uh, who was a female type of civilian sutler soldier uh, that fell in with Zouave regiments during the American Civil War. Uh, though most Zouave regiments had Vivandier, uh, not many of them had remained with the unit for their entire course of duty. French Mary was one of those. Um, and of course she would be standing today near where the artillery pieces are today. Um, if you zoom in on the photograph of her, this is her in the photograph uh, zoomed in. And you can look at other pi pictures of Mary Tepe and definitely pick it out as her. And of course the 114th Pennsylvania uh, fought on July 2nd of 1863 uh, near the Sherfy Farm in the Sherfy Peach Orchard. Um, also, as you look at the Guten Coast photo, uh, you can see a tent here in the distance. And this is the reason that I believe that I have been able to add to the story and determine the date as July 12th, 1863. I have a letter uh, in my personal collection from a man named Garsed. Garsed, Mr. Garsed rather, had a, a son named Joshua Garsed. Now Joshua Garsed was a member of the 23rd Pennsylvania Volunteers also known as Bernie Zouavs. And on July 3rd, 1863, Joshua Garsed, Lieutenant of Company B, 23rd Pennsylvania, um, was killed uh, to the right and rear of Meade's headquarters as the 6th Corps was advancing up the slope, heading toward, toward Meade's headquarters as a reserve uh, for the Union soldiers involved in the repulsing of Pickett's charge. He was struck by a Whitworth shell right near the shoulder and it nearly decapitated him, killing him instantly. Um, I have 13 letters from Joshua Garsed during his service and also one that his father wrote. And in the letter, it describes a disinfector set up on Cemetery Hill on the evening of the 11th and disinfecting bodies um, two bodies on July 12th, 1863. One of them about 6.30 in the morning, that morning, um, and the second one around 11 o'clock in the morning uh, on July 12th, 1863. It is my guess that this photograph by Gutenkos most likely was not taken at 6 o'clock in the morning, but rather uh, sometime after 11 o'clock in the morning, uh, the disinfector's tent is closed in the photograph, meaning that he's probably in there disinfecting the body. The Gar said father's letter also says and gives details about the disinfecting process. Uh, Joshua Gar said's body was brought here to East Cemetery Hill uh, and he was put in a casket 
and chlorate of lime was used to remove the odor by the disinfector. Um, and then he was placed in the casket in his lieutenant's uniform. Um, and he was taking, taken rather down the Tawny Town Road uh, to the Michael Fry Farm where he was temporarily buried for about a week until his father arrived here um, from Rocks, Roxboro in Philadelphia to take his son's remains back to Philadelphia. So I do believe that the picture of the tent uh, here that shows in this photograph is the actual live uh, disinfecting of Joshua Garced's body. Now again, uh, this this series, uh, this two-part series, has been on the tulip poplar tree, which you can see there on the left, a 90-foot tree that once stood here on East Cemetery Hill. Um, we're talking about it today. We're unlocking the secret of its location, uh, also the secret of the woman in the photograph, and now the secret of the tent, and along with the Joshua Garced story, uh, have been able to determine the exact, or pr most likely the exact date of this Frederick Guten Coast uh, picture. Also, I do want to mention, as Joshua Gar said, uh, Frederick Guten Coast was a Philo Philadelphia photographer. Um, so, again, this has been the Tulip Popular Tree, part two on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook.